Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about uh, the top 10 films of all time. Um, coming in at number 10, we have Jonah Hex, uh, that's right, starring Josh Brolin. Um, I really think it's his greatest comic book role that he's done, um, and hopefully uh, they make a sequel. Um, I know they're, they're in talks to make at least three or four more of those. Um, but anyway, at number 9, we have uh, Jonah Hex. Um, truly a an amazing uh western uh thriller and um uh hopefully they'll make a few more of these i think it has uh it has legs you know the movie really has legs um at uh number eight we have jonah hex um i think that this movie is really you know uh underrated um truly just a great look into the mind of a cowboy with a fucked up face Hey everybody, welcome to the weekly comic polls. This is Wednesday, March 29th, and uh, we got a lot of exciting number ones today. Um, let's uh, jump right into it. Lucas, what is your first pick? So my first pick is an interesting number one. Uh, it's called Indigo Children. Number uh, This is the first issue. The cover alone is really intriguing, but uh, basically, I think I think the reason why I'm so interested in this is because... Uh, the pitch for this is Radiant Black meets Department of Truth. And do those are two of my favorite indie series going on right now. So um, basically it's about these children that had powers that disappeared 15 years ago and now they suddenly reappear. Um, so it should be interesting. I'm, I'm really excited to see where this goes. And yeah, hopefully it's good. First up for me is Action Comics 1053. Last issue was, uh, was a very fun issue showing that um, Metallo is going to create an army. Um, I guess they're calling it the Necro Hive. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a really great idea. Uh, obviously puts them, you know, more on the same level as the Superman family. Otherwise, you know, he'd probably not have such an easy time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but this is really cool. So we're going to see how he, I guess, transforms these people uh, into you know, obeying his command. And um, I also thought it was interesting that they think that um, Lex isn't behind this and that it's possibly possible that someone is just manipulating Metallo um, behind the scenes, which I yeah. think is an interesting twist uh, and gives more nuance to this, you know. So um, I know you haven't been reading Superman, so I can actually clue you in a little bit on this. Um, in Superman, Lex gives ownership of the company LexCorp to Superman. Um, oh. Yeah, he he renamed it to SuperCorp, and uh, he said that if anyone else takes it, um, it will immediately z dissolve and ruin the entire economy of Metropolis. So he he wants Superman to depend on it to be the perfect version of Superman, and so oh. he's trying to steer Superman toward like killing his enemies and do this do all these different things that he normally wouldn't do hmm. in a vain attempt to basically make Superman the best version of himself because he can do it because only Lex can can bring out the best in Superman quote unquote huh interesting okay yeah it's a it's an interesting twist that kind of like fits into this narrative that Lex doesn't really have anything to do with this cool next up for me is uh it's only teenage wasteland. Um, I've been loving the series. The series is incredibly well written. The teenage dialogue feels very, very real and very, very um, natural. Like the friendship between these friends makes you want to spend more time with them. And the mystery of how they got into this this world is interesting. So basically what happened was uh, the world, they were at a party. They were throwing a party in their parents' house and the world flashed. And all of a sudden, they they appeared in the same place, but what they think is hundreds of years later in the future. Um, the world is post-apocalyptic, and depending on how close they were to each other, they arrived at different times. So, like, his sister arrived, like, a year before him, or ten years before him, and he arrived with his friends now. Um, and so the story is following, following the one main character, and uh, basically his, the fact that he has to deal with, uh, that everyone's gone. <laughs> and uh, all, all the people that he's ever loved is gone, basically. And that this weird new world is kind of just 
barely scavenged together. So yeah, it's it's really interesting though. It's it's sick. It's Dark Horse comics. So I've been very happy with it. And mm-hmm. this is only the conclusion to the first arc. So I'm I'm glad that it's getting more than one, uh, more than four issues. Nice. Uh, next up for me is Deadpool number five. Um, this has been a really fun Deadpool series. I think it's it really embodies everything that I want out of a Deadpool series. Um, but uh, quite the twist at the end um, of last issue where a full-grown Cletus just pops out of Deadpool. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it actually Cletus? You know, I guess we'll find out. Um, it seems to me like the Carnage symbiote is always going to come back to Cletus or vice versa. Like they seem inseparable, I guess. Um, which is an interesting thing that they've been exploring with all these other versions of Carnage. You know, um, like the symbiote codex, um, wanting to, uh, embody Cletus and wanting to be Cletus, you know, stuff like that. So this might be another one of those situations, but it's going to be interesting to see how Deadpool handles it. Um, really been enjoying the art on this book and really been enjoying the dialogue on this book. So always excited yeah. to read another issue. I actually really love the, uh, the one character, um, Valent- Valentine. Yeah, yeah. Valentine. Yep. Yeah. Um, she's really interesting. I love that she brought, uh, Lady Deathstrike back to life, but also poisoned her. Yeah. And I, I like that. I didn't realize her arms were completely made out of glass. So yeah, that's, that's kind of that, kind of fucking crazy that she yeah. just like broke her arm and she's just like, yeah, I need to get this fixed. Very interesting um, character design. Yeah. No, very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, no, the series, the series has been fun. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see if this leads into the carnage event that's going to be happening later this year. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, pretty fun though. Yeah. Uh, next up for me is Money Morphin Power Rangers slash Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, issue number four. Um, I caught up on the series. I read one and two within like one day or two days and it was amazing. And, uh, Man, this this has been such a fun fucking series. Uh, basically, Rita Repulsa is working with the Krangs, and sh- now the teenage mutant inter- t- uh, the turtles and uh, the Rangers are now working with Shredder, which is kind of wild to say. And um, so now the the turtles have uh, the powers of the power coin, but also on top of that the rangers are using ooze to turn into their own versions of the dinosaurs. As you can see on the cover, uh, Red Ranger turns into part T-Rex, uh, Yellow Ranger turns part Sabretooth, Green Ranger turns uh, part Dragon, which makes no logical sense because it's it's not a real animal. But, what, I mean, this is a world where aliens and talking turtles exist so uh <laughs> but yeah no this has been fun if you love if you love either franchise this has been just a blast honestly yeah and dan Mora's on the art so um you know it's good nice um next up for me i got uh venom lethal protector two number one um part two i guess in the uh lethal protector flashback series um this looks like a completely different team. I'm just realizing. Um, Is it David Michelini and Farid Karami? So I guess, yeah. So the tagline for this one is uh, "Brock vs. Doom." Um, so that's pretty crazy. Um, no, it was the same team. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll kind of. It's literally just starting off where the last issue um, ended. Um, Brock vs. Doom. Um, so this is going to be probably fucking really crazy, really fun. Um, the last series was just such a blast and, uh, shouted out a lot of obscure villains, a lot of obscure characters, um, which is my favorite kind of book. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be more of the same. Uh, and I'm sure it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be a blast. Yeah, it should be fun. But yeah, no, I mean, they had Humbug, they had like a bunch of different characters that like we haven't seen in forever in the last one and it was really funny it was actually a really surprisingly funny and touching series so I'm, yeah yeah I'm, I'm i'm excited to see where this goes and i mean hey since everyone everyone's always complaining we're not getting the the real venom we're not getting the one that eats the brains um yeah this this should satisfy people for a bit exactly. while ewing is still writing his 
really, really interesting story. Yeah. Next up for me is Gotham City Year One, number six. This is the final issue. I am really, really excited to see where this goes. Um, we have been following uh, Slam Bradley. I mean, yeah, Slam Bradley as a. Uh, as he's dealt with Constance Wayne and Patrick Wayne, uh, ancestors of uh, Batman, Bruce Wayne, and uh, the fact that they had their kid die. And we learned last issue that Constance is the one that had her daughter killed um, to pin it on Patrick so that he couldn't leave. Um, so now the question is, what's going to happen? Because we know that eventually Bruce is going to be born. So that doesn't mean that they're going to be either arrested. <laughs> So what's going to happen? What's going to happen to Slam? And uh, we know that Slam is currently on his deathbed telling Bruce this, the story, um, which is why Batman's outside the hospital room and hearing him. But what will this result in? What what will happen? And I, I, I mean, I'm just excited to see where this goes. Very nice. Next up for me is Unstoppable Doom Patrol number one. I've uh, been very, very uh, excited and anticipating this series. Um, I've been, you know, wanting a new Doom Patrol book for a long time, and I'm glad we're finally getting it. We're going to get some new um, characters as well, um, so always uh, interested in new power sets and new characters that they can introduce to this very, you know, interesting Motley crew. Yeah, um, definitely. Unstoppable is the tagline on this Doom Patrol book, so I wonder how that's going to reflect um, this story. And um, I believe uh, Crazy Jane is the leader of this outfit, right? Yes, she is now has a personality called the Chief, and so uh, they they are now in charge of the group. And they added two new members: Beast Girl, who is the one that you see in the far left corner, mm -hmm. um, and Degenerate, who the stronger he gets, the more mindless he becomes. Yeah. So he sounds sick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm super excited to check this out. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Dennis Culver's work, um, but I have seen some Chris Burnham art before. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this book. Yeah, no, it, it should be interesting. I'm pretty sure he wrote, he apparently wrote Dark Crisis, uh, an issue of Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths. He wrote Just the Incarnate. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so... Um, should be interesting to say the least. I'm trying to see what else he wrote. Uh, three issues of Batman Urban Legend, so he's not he's not unfamiliar and he knows how to write, obviously. Um, so this should be interesting and fun for him to yeah. see where this goes. Yeah, very excited to check this out. Yeah. Um, and my last pick is uh, as you can tell, it was a very very indie week for me. Um, my last pick though is Once Upon a Time at the End of the World. Um, this is the end of the first arc for the series and. It has been amazing. Um, I never thought Jason Aaron could write a really good, compelling love story, but here I am, proven wrong. <laughs> uh, Jason Aaron is really, really good at writing romantic stories, and it's very, very interesting to see these two characters, Maceo and Mezzi, um, overcome their differences and realize how different they are and how they have different strengths. Uh, Maceo has, has his... Uh, his quirks, but he's amazing at eventing. Uh, Mezzi has has her survival skills, but she's not very sociable and doesn't know about the the world before the apocalypse. So it's been interesting to see how they've like kind of taught each other. And uh, now uh, Maceo has been kidnapped by the group that Mezzi was running from this entire time. So I I'm wondering what's going to happen. Um, this has been great though, and I will say I do love this cover. I love how how much detail and uh, emotions in it. Nice. So yeah. yeah, no, it's sick. It's a very nice cover. And what's your final pick? My final pick uh, for this week is Dark Knights of Steel number ten. That's right, Dark Knights of Steel is finally back, and we're finally um, coming towards the end here. Uh, this is ten out of twelve issues. Yeah, so, uh, the next issues in May. <laughs> Damn, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why they're taking their time on this one, but... Uh, Fucking green hell all over again. <laughs> <laughs> but just, um, just it, it's 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 always, you know, it's always an amazing issue. Yeah. Um, 
and you know they're really you know building towards a grand you know a grand story here um so i think this it looks like this issue is going to be featuring the green man um which is awesome um i'd love some more time with him um and yeah i'm just you know always super psyched to read another dark knights of steel yeah, I mean, I actually want Bruce to interact more with the Green Man. I mean, he is a, a fusion yeah. between Lex Luthor and Joker, so um, well, I really GL, wanted to right? see how how it ends. And also, apparently, he says the end game for season one, which means that there's going to be more volumes, which I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised oh, by in the God. slightest. I hope so. But uh, I also love uh, the reveal last issue that uh, John Jones is uh, Alfred Pennyworth. Yeah fucking wild <laughs> yeah it's good good reveal it was it was something i i honestly did not i mean i knew i i kind of called it to elias that there was going to be green martians and they were and the martians were going to be the real villains i didn't know if it was going to be white or green martians depending on which version but yeah i i was not expecting the alfred twist that that completely caught me off guard yeah but uh yeah no the series has been amazing i'm really excited to see where it goes and uh hopefully uh john and all of them can group together and fight this off Mm -hmm. but yeah um these have been our weekly pulls for march 29th um hope you guys have enjoyed a lot of fun stuff to pick up this week so definitely go visit your shop as always make sure to like subscribe support your local comic shop and read comics catch you guys next time see you